And there was a time when we, in the 90s when we were funded at like 38th in the nation of per student funding. And now we are near the absolute bottom. We're somewhere uh, around the fourth highest class sizes in the nation to the highest. And our kids are paying the price for that in the lack of skills when they graduate because there's just not enough time. I mean, unless you're a teacher who just doesn't grade stuff, um, but we don't do that. I mean, kids need feedback. Being a music teacher, it was always a little bit different at the beginning of the year. I would have students, fifth and sixth grade beginning band or orchestra, who really wanted to play, but maybe their parents couldn't afford to rent them an instrument. And several times the school didn't have enough money to keep our supply of instruments. I would find that after I got my first paycheck of the school year, I would go around and I would hit the pawn shops. Mm -hmm. And I would have my list of what students needed. It was a challenge because on, on teacher pay, uh, I, I didn't always have that much extra money. It's the rural schools that, that are hit the hardest. I've seen firsthand what it means for students. They're using older textbooks. They don't have the newest computers. I've had several examples on the school board. A teacher would come in in September and try to get out of his or her contract in December. It's important that we defend school funding and teachers from culture war attacks. I came to the legislature, uh, put a pause on spending time with my grandkids because I thought this was such an important issue to raise teacher salaries. One of the main things that I hear from people at the doors that I visit is we need to improve our economy. Guess what the best way is to improve our economy? To have a strong, educated workforce. The one-seat Republican majority refuses to even hear bills that don't follow their privatization agenda or come from their own party. I have the um, opportunity to see this from a parent and a board member perspective. Ever since my kids um, started their public schools in Arizona, they have not had a fully funded education. I see all the time Amazon wish lists and GoFundMes just so teachers can have what they need. We have teacher shortages, we have staff shortages, um, and it's not because there aren't certified teachers here. It's, it's because teachers can't afford to or, or, or don't want to teach here. Um, we're not making it um, worth their while. Even in the more affluent districts, we have paper shortages. I teach advanced placement. They need to be able to annotate. It's still a test at that time. I was lucky enough to have parents fill in the gap, but it always made me feel really bad because I do know that there are so many areas of the state where that is just not feasible. I grew up here as well. Um, I'm a third generation and it wasn't like this when I was growing up. When we elect a pro-public education majority this November, public schools will once again become the priority that they should be.